Hey, let's start the show. For Thursday, May 5th, 2022, welcome to This Is Only a Test, the official podcast of Tested.com. All right, I am digging it. Wow, that's some good energy for those <laughs> you watching right. the video. <laughs> I'm Norm here, and joining me, I got two very special guests. I got Bill and Brittany Duran of Punish Props Academy. <gasps> Bill and Britt, it's so good to see you both. It's yes. so good to see you, Norm. It's fantastic on the Revenge of the Fifth. Happy yes. to be here. Oh, I forgot that like... that's a thing. <laughs> of course, celebrating we were, with everyone. We were recording this on May fifth, and yesterday was, of course, Star Wars Day. Uh, may the fourth be with you and you as well, and also with you, and Nick. Thank you. <laughs> and I forget that there's always a follow up day. Like it's too big for one day. I thought I was safe sharing Star Trek stuff. Now, <laughs> but no, it's Revenge of the Fifth. Okay, that's right. <laughs> I, yeah, I love today's it. the day for all the cosplayers to share their Sith costumes mm-hmm. online. So look for those. Oh. Fantastic! Yep. Those dark oh. gray costumes. Those, yeah, uh, yes. Darth Sidious. All the, all of them. Yes. They get to, they get their di- day in the sun today. Nice, nice. Not a lot of black and red, and yeah, and, and glowy, glowy red lightsabers. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, uh, it, it's been a while since we've had you, Bill, on the show. And Britt, it's your first time here. Um, it's been a while since we've chatted. I know you guys have been doing a bunch of traveling, been following some of your projects. So we're going to use this episode this time just to do a bunch of catch up because the world's on fire in so many different ways. <laughs> uh, we're not even going to touch Twitter. I know a lot of people are like, don't talk about Twitter. Don't talk about <laughs> politics. So nope, this is just going to be a fun catch up episode with friends uh, and uh, of, for those of you who are unfamiliar with Punish Props Academy, the great work that you two do. And we'll talk about some pop culture stuff, some Star Wars mm-hmm. stuff. There's, don't worry, we're going to catch on all that. But uh, I want to jump right into catch up because this is, it's, yeah. this is for me. You listeners, you guys can, can, <laughs> can sit in the room, but it's been so long since I got to hang out with, with you two. What's been going on in the world of Punish Props Academy? Uh, sure. We've been super busy making stuff. We build props in our basement uh, and make videos for the internet so they can follow along. We've had a ton of really just like bucket list projects recently mm-hmm. that we've been scratching off the list. And it's yeah. been a lot of fun. And it's all at our own pace, too. Like mm-hmm. We've been taking it real easy, uh, you know, making stuff at a casual pace. Yeah. And we've been enjoying it a lot more. Right. Really enjoying our time spent in the shop Mm -hmm. filming. Most of the time I'm making and Brittany's filming and Britt does, uh, she does most of the filming and most of the editing for all of our videos. Uh, And we found, we've, we, a couple of years ago, we're working way, way too hard. We were just cranking out videos like insane people. But now we, we found a good rhythm. Yes. Uh, So we've been. Well, so, as I uh, say, yeah, yeah, it, the, you guys had the shop, you guys, you know, rented, rented out. It was, of course, the pre, pre-lockdown times, mm-hmm. you know, there was a whole kind of the, the content creation thing because you guys, you do the, the books, but it was also really ramping up, you know, what uh, the YouTube channel was mm-hmm. going to be. And, you know, we all, every content creator I've talked to you has gone through that same phase of ramp yeah. up and a little bit of burnout, right? And, oh, and, more and, than a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, like I said, we found a good rhythm now and we're having a lot of fun. Uh, so some projects that we have uh, done recently. You want to grab the, the squirrel, Britt? Yeah. Uh, have you played Inscription, Norm? I have not. I have <sighs> not. Um, but I, 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 I've I seen recommend it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and, Give and me I the re- pitch. What's the elevator uh, pitch? Well, the the pitch is um, uh, you don't talk much about inscription before you play it because <laughs> okay. uh, it's one of those games that has a lot of secrets. Mm. Uh, so you just really go in blind. But it's it's a card game. Um, mm. uh, with it's like uh, Magic the Gathering meets an escape room, kind of. That's a oh. great explanation. Yeah. For yeah. It. A great so there's pitch. a card game element to it, but there's also an environment that you have to explore and find all of its secrets. And it's intertwined with the card game. And since it's a single player game, uh, the computer you play against um, allows for kind of like an offset uh, combat. So the, uh, the the dungeon master character gets to do different things than you do. So it makes a really clever kind of mm-hmm. card game setup. Ah. Uh, and in the game, uh, there are these totems that can augment your cards. And we made one of them. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, oh, can light it up? Oh, yeah. yeah. And it lights, lights up. Of course, it. we made it light up. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Is that so digitally the, sculpted? 
or is that? Yeah. Ah. So the the cool thing is this model was done by the artist who made it for the game. Oh, wow. And um, the artist was able to put all the files up on uh, ArtStation, I think. And mm-hmm. anyone can just go download them and print them. And, I think he put them on Thingiverse, or, but his um, his art is on ArtStation. There you go. But. <sighs> so, yeah, we grabbed the files. We had to tweak it a little bit so we could get some lights in there yeah, and yeah. make it work. But, uh, yeah, this was printed on a resin printer. I think the uh, Anycubic Photon Mono X, I believe. Yes, <laughs> I love the Mono X. Yes, yes. And it, it turned out awesome. The places where light shine through, that's just the bare resin. We just didn't paint that part. It was a clear resin so that the okay. light can shine through. Yeah. That's a really clever and easy way. I mean, you have to be, of course, you have no problem with it, but the, the mask or the, making sure that there's no light bleed, like mm-hmm. really cover the nook and crannies. And yeah. Oh, and there's some light bleed. There is. If you go in a dark room, you'll notice spots where, where you the can't, light bleeds. You can't through. get rid of it, right? It's no. like you, it's, in, in daylight when you're shining light at it and outdoors, like, ooh, I did a really good job. Oh, yeah, totally right. covered. Yeah, all, all the washes and everything. But no, yeah. no. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's uh, awesome. That, that was really fun. We did the, um, there's a squirrel in a b- card, a squirrel card in a bottle. We, we made one of those a while back as well. We really enjoyed that game. Uh, and they made it easy for us to build stuff out of the game, which was really fun. Uh, more video game stuff. Yes. We. Uh, so did you play Tunic yet? <laughs> I did play Tunic. Super yes. cute. Yes. Now, yes. did you play Tunic? Yeah. No, nah, I did dab- I dabbled in okay, Tunic. Okay, <laughs> because there is there is a lot of secrets in Tunic in the manual. Yeah. Mm. Um, so if you haven't done all the secrets, I recommend just flipping through the manual. Seriously. Oh. So the folks that uh, published Tunic reached out to us and sponsored a video, and we built the Sword and Shield. Oh. To, sk- to human scale. Right. It's so yeah. cute. Yes. Uh, this was so much fun. It's all EVA foam, of course. It's, these are cosplay props. Um, they're con safe. Uh, they're really fun and cartoony. It's so much fun to put together stuff like this. It's got these um, wacky, whimsical proportions. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah. that was that was super yeah. duper fun. Such a cute game. Uh, you know, uh, we played through the whole thing, too. It was It was great. I, I, I got to call this out for the uh, audio listeners, the who, who, who you know who may not have played the game. Think of a kind of caricature, like almost Lego sword and shield at mm-hmm. human scale, so big. Mm-hmm. But uh, even if, if when you think of a game or like a, a prop like that that's low poly, relatively speaking, right? There's still a lot of nuance in the beveling mm-hmm. that, to to still give it like a shape that's not flat yeah. that has a contour yeah because they were the game is super low poly it has a tilt shift look to it so everything looks yeah. very tiny so yeah. making yeah. large versions of that was was a little challenging and then I also see, it's it's deceptively low poly because you're adding there's a lot more going on there than meets the right. eye it just yeah. looks low poly to the eye mm-hmm uh, also, painting things that you can't weather is a challenge. You have to nail it. <laughs> you can't hide <laughs> no your crimes hide, yeah. with a wash here and there. Oh, oh, what type <laughs> of paint having, was, is going on that? Uh, on this that. one, uh, we sealed it with Mod Podge and Plasti Dip. Mm. Uh, the, all mm. the silver is just the silver Plasti Dip. It's, um, it's called Peel Coat. Rust-Oleum Peel Coat is the okay. yeah. rubberized thing. So you can buy it in silver. Uh, mm. So there's kind of no extra paint on this part. Oh, and then the great. colors, I believe, were golden. Yeah, the golden brand. Yeah, uh, with an airbrush. Oh. Uh, we did some vacuum forming to make the gems. Yep. There. Oh, that's nice, nice, nice. Yeah. And then a real leather handle, leather wrap yes. on the handle there. Oh, classic technique. Yeah. 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 Oh, wonderful. Yeah, that was super fun. It gave us a reason to film a Monty Python skit for the video, which was good. <laughs> so if you watch that video, stick around to the very end. Or just skip to the end. Or just it's, skip to the it's end. It's a long video. It's you can just, just watch the end. <laughs> it's the scene where Lancelot is attacking the castle. And, and that's we what you just, guys do so well with all the props you make, whether it's yeah. Ghostbusters. You know, yeah. it, it's, it's about having fun. And we're trying right. to do more of that here at Tested. Yeah. Because the build itself can be so, as you guys know, grueling or, or time intensive or, or just yeah. wearing on you right you're trying I, to get I really something appreciated done. the uh the nerf uh yeah. kind of skit you guys yeah. did yeah. recently that was yeah. really good yeah. and it takes the extra effort it, it requires right. you to, like to to take a breath and a break from the finished thing and not just want to get it out into the world because mm-hmm. when you're done with something you're so proud of it you're like oh i want people to see it i want the, the videos right. done but to spend the extra time to be thoughtful about the best way to have fun with it uh, so it has this, this nice payoff. That's yeah. It, it, it that's something yeah. we love, including stuff like that. So when we were doing 
this this one i'll show you this actually i'll show you right now one of our other projects it's, a it's long. really long it's it's aragorn's yes. lightsaber, lightsaber. <laughs> you, might, you might hear it for the audio uh listeners let's see turn on oh is the battery you gotta, you gotta pull the, oh, pull the right. thing out right there we go Yay, Ooh. you got it. All right, there we go. <laughs> nice purple So we glow. did a scene when we were making this. A lot of sanding. It's a 3D print, the same the same resin printer. Uh, but we were sanding it, and that takes a while, and it's not a lot of fun to film sanding. Mm -hmm. So we recreated the scene from the movie Ghost with Patrick Swayze, <laughs> only with sanding. <laughs> nice. People it's, even thought it was funny or creepy. It's yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, <laughs> and, and completely offbeat, but it, it captures the essence of making and exactly, the, the kind yeah. of yeah the <laughs> oh yeah that Brit that's but awesome. That's something we found with our slower pace now with our moot with our videos. Um, uh, is it gives us time to insert little things like that because the setup it was a silly scene and it lasts like twenty seconds in the video. Mm -hmm. It took us like an hour to shoot it. Like there was setup. <laughs> <laughs> we had to plan all the shots shot for shot compared to we had the, to go watch the scene yeah we had to watch and yeah. do some research mm -hmm. yep but that's part of the, the part of the video that i remember the most Absolutely. making it i we have videos we've made that i know i've spent like dozens of hours on where it's a blur i don't remember any step of the process it just went by so fast so taking the time to add that silly stuff really makes us happy yeah. well i know with uh with you norm part of the fun of the videos you do on your own is doing the uh, beauty shots yeah. at the end. Yeah, that's that's um, what I live for. Uh -huh. and, Lighting and, and beauty shots. You've been yeah. doing such a great job with all those videos you're doing on your own. Like probably at 2 a.m. in your house. 2 or 3 a.m. Don't look at the watch. Yeah. The, the telltale sign is the time on the watch. It's, it's, it's like 2 a.m. the night before the video goes out is mm -hmm. when, it's, when that happens. Sounds about right. But yeah, that's I think that's the most fun. I mean, if you're going to make something, it's, it's almost like... Um, like, you know, Adam says, uh, like, theater is a great entryway into to making because you have, like, the, the constraints of you know, what you're making for – when you're making something for a production, not for yourself, so it needs to have a purpose, it needs to be durable, but you're also working under time constraints and material constraints, mm -hmm. and I feel a lot of that same energy, I think, when mm -hmm. you're making content for a video that you want to – it's got to get it working that one yeah. time or hold it together for the photo shoot or the video exactly. shoot yeah. at the end. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I have a we have a prop I made on a deadline for a video a couple years ago. Oh geez, it was like 2016. Yeah. A couple of years ago, it was, it was a big Skyrim axe. Yeah, giant Skyrim axe. The video looked great. The client was super happy with it. We made it for Bethesda. The other half, the the other half of the the axe that you don't see on, not done at all. <laughs> not even remotely yeah. done. The it's video all about came the out, angles. Uh, yeah, yeah. We finished it by the time we mailed it to Bethesda. Oh yeah, but, but for the video. We just always film the same side because we mm -hmm. were running out of time. Mm -hmm. And I, I think there's a there's a magic magical quality, like you know when you're deep into the making of something and you know you're appreciating the, the paint job or whatever. Like you're like oh because you're so in the weeds of it, you, you only see the flaws. Maybe like mm -hmm. I don't know. Sometimes right. I'm like, I only see the seams. I only see oh, the parts yeah. that I, I I didn't do well. Um, and it's like you're in the sausage making of it yeah. um and, and maybe it's the same for people who who work in film like like this, this is one of those things like are, are they there's like a not necessarily like a jaded aspect but there's less of a magical aspect uh if you if you know exactly how everything is mm -hmm. made but there the magic comes at the end because when you apply the things like effects or video uh or or lighting you know that's real physics coming into it it like revitalizes the mm -hmm. project yeah at the yeah end. And that's, that's always, how i feel yeah. when i'm doing our, our our beauty shots yeah get the fog machine out yeah yeah and it looks it, cooler than it ever lights. did oh, during yeah. the whole build right and, it, it's and like, it looks cooler than it ever will ever again right because from that point forward it's going to get dinged or scratched yeah. or smudged <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> So it's got to be hard uh, working in film when you might have to wait years before you get to see the prop you made yeah. in yeah. the final movie and be like, it looks great. Oh, no, <laughs> yeah. it looks good now. Yeah. I don't see yes. any of the hot glue. Exactly. exactly. Uh, all right. One more project here. Actually, I, I'm going to tease this thing, too. But this this here is something I finished <gasps> recently. The, the Noisy, noisy cricket. cricket. Oh, oh. Okay. For people listening to audio, this is a perfect one-to-one -one replica of the noisy cricket from Men in Black. And I, I haven't seen this in person, Bill, the, the one you have. But in the video, and even the video you shot, and, and just through this webcam footage, yeah. the finish on that <laughs> looks 
metallic. The only Doesn't thing it? that betrays the fact I mean, it's light. It's lightweight. So the only thing that betrays yeah. the fact that it's not like machined is mm-hmm. I can, you can hold it at the tip of your fingertips. And right, it's not yeah. like weighing down <laughs> like as if it was aluminum or steel. Uh, but that looks so good. It looks like it's machined. Yeah. Uh, I, w- I do want to make one out of aluminum someday. But I'm th- so this is all clad paint on here. Uh, so nothing fancy except that I spent an extra lot of time sanding this. That's, yeah. that's what makes all the difference. A really clean, smooth. Uh, mm. surface i put lights in there this back part slides Ooh. out the lights my uh wiring is a little little janky there oh battery's falling out <laughs> get back in there <laughs> but uh yeah it's got lights in there uh, so this was built we have a video obviously over on our youtube channel but this was built as an example for a fusion 360 course that i just put out yes yeah so, so that was all i want to hear about printed, this and mm-hmm. yeah it's- um, so what I wanted to be able to do, I both Brittany and I went to school for computer art, but we did a lot of 3D modeling in Maya, modeling and texturing and rigging and animation. Like we did all of that in college. Uh, but 3D modeling was where we really got a lot of practice. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like then this was back in 2000 to 2004. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, back in the day, Maya and Bryce 3D. Oh and gosh. 3D Studio Max. Anyway. We've since gotten into Fusion 360 for all of our CAD work and 3D printing. It's so good for making props. Uh, and since I already have all that 3D modeling knowledge in my brain, I figured let's put it all into a video course uh, so that other people can take advantage of this information too. It's a four hour long video course, a lot of example project or three example projects, including the noisy cricket. Like I modeled, I, I, I recorded the entire process of this. For the and this course. is from a reference, right? This is the, the whole idea is how to create and model, yeah. you know, with hard edge modeling using the kind of photo reference uh, that people would be doing when making a movie prop replica. Exactly. So the other two references or examples I have is the Hellboy Bullet, good beginner project, yep, yep. Uh, and then Luke's lightsaber from Return of the Jedi. A lot of cylinders stacked on yeah, top of one another. Yeah. Lots of good practice. Yeah. Um, my goal with this course, obviously fusion is this huge beast. You can do manufacturing, all sorts of stuff. I focused on just the 3d modeling tools that I use for making props, yeah. mostly basic stuff. This course is designed for the beginners, someone who's never touched fusion before. Um, you can get a free account, uh, through Autodesk. You can re-up that free account every year if you're a hobbyist and use fusion for free, which, uh, which I think is really fantastic. I'm going to praise this and give you more praise on this because oh, we've done a little you. bit of like fusion work when you used to come down to the office. Um, mm-hmm. What was the one that we did? The, the, was it the neural oh, modeling? It was uh, the, the port on the spacesuit, right? Yes. You recreated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. And that was, yeah. And then back then, my head wasn't like absorbing it the way my yeah. head is absorbing it now because like even the the project you you mentioned earlier one you, you guys are resin printing now and we have so mm-hmm. many we know so many people out there because resin printing is so accessible now and fdm yeah. prints is accessible as well but there's a there's a there's a, a quality to the fidelity of resin prints that oh, yeah. just it, it, it I mean, really is it, it almost how tiny the neural exactly. are on this little pays for itself hammer. and sells itself <laughs> right it's, it's so cheap and affordable um and yes, there's a wealth of models that you can download. It feels like step one. You, you buy a resin printer because you can get these injection molded quality like miniatures. You support some Patreons, buy some stuff on my mini factory. But the next step is to kind of make it your own or, mm-hmm. or, or create something out of it. And even there, like Tinkercad is a super valuable resource. That's Autodesk as well. When you talked about downloading a model, purchasing a model from the artist for video game records, like the squirrel, mm-hmm. having to do some hogging out and creating some channels or or uh, modifying that, that's something that I see more people doing or wanting to yeah. do. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. Or, um, and Mesh, mesh Mixer is really good for that. Yes. To getting yes. a model and, and, and modifying it a bit. So either slicing it or just yep. create, doing some, uh, some, some uh, what is it called, uh, Boolean operations on mm-hmm. it. Right. Uh, yeah. And like t- Tinkercad, I think, is web based too. It so, is. Like, it is. You don't right. even have to download anything. You just and need that's to whip up some gateway. primitives. It is. Exactly. And that's like, that's like the yeah. Lego in my mind. I think of that as like the <laughs> Lego of, of modeling because I can, I can understand. I'm just combining a cylinder and subtracting, you know, a, a shape out of this and yes that's how i'm going to get fins or ridges mm-hmm. uh, but you can only go so far with a tinkercad mm-hmm. but I, I think it gives you it's given me this foundation of like 
I, I, I'm not as scared of just navigating an interface. Yeah. Like I, I understand some basic shortcuts and I understand like you don't want to get hung up. I feel like so much of modeling is getting hung up on shortcuts and um, the just the the UI of it all. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so uh, I'm actually I'm glad you brought that up because um, when I was filming the this course, something I do all the time, especially in Fusion. And if anyone uh, listening is using Fusion, here's one of my top tips. The S button is for search. And then you just type in whatever command you want to use. I never go through menus. Mm -hmm. I try and use as many keyboard shortcuts as possible. Yeah. So yeah. when I was filming it, I would just say out loud, S chamfer or S fillet or S combine. Mm. I just say that out loud when I'm doing uh, the recording for the example project so that other people when they're watching get that repetition, understand right. that um, right. I'm repeating the vocabulary out loud a lot. Um, some you may be familiar with one software package that calls things differently than mm -hmm. like or the xyz is a diff different orientation or the the global scale is 10 times bigger or smaller than a different one and we've used yeah. 3d modeling programs for enough years to watch them change over time and move their tools around yep. uh, uh, yeah the tools usually at least are called the same thing so yep. like yeah. if fusion updates in the future and moves their stuff around at least you can still hit s and yeah, search for exactly it. so it long as like you know they the do that cab. just for the fun of it it's yeah. like yeah. these subscription-based software packages. Like, oh, we're going to we every year. It. We changed it. Figure it out. We'll keep you on your toes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so anyway, uh, that that course is, uh, I think we have it for like 15 bucks over on our website, punishprops.com. A bunch of other good stuff over there too. Like we have some 3D models like our Bash the Stampede revolver or their Blade Runner. Um, I, I redesigned the Blade Runner blaster. Uh, those are all over on our website if you want to get those and print them. And that noisy cricket, that model is in that package. Too. Yeah, if you so, get the course, you'll you'll see. I actually put two versions of it. I did a first pass of the noisy cricket. I printed it. I made some updates, and then I printed the second version. Both of them are in there so that people can kind of see the the updates that are made. Because mm -hmm. uh, this is rapid prototyping. Um, you you print one, you see what needs to be updated, you yeah. tweak it a little bit, and then print it again. That's how it goes until you get it just right. Yeah. In yeah. fact, this one. I would love to make a few changes to this one. <laughs> well, scale is the, the biggest thing I have. Like, you, you, oh, I want to sure. send Bump something to down. a laser cutter to the printer as soon as possible because how the size that it is on the computer monitor, even when I see have rulers and I have, is never, I never fully comprehend how big right. it is until exactly. it's actually printed out. And I hold yeah. it. Like, oh, yeah. yeah. You'll add some kind of like indent and you'll look super deep when you're zoomed yeah. in. Yeah. And you print it out and it's like, like 0.1 millimeters. You don't even yeah. see it. Didn't right. print. Exactly. You can't even feel it. <laughs> All right, one last project. This is a this is a coming soon sort of thing, but I'll give give uh, everyone a tease. So this is a com badge. Star Trek. We haven't made anything from Star Trek. This will be the first one. Now we picked this one specifically because this is the one that is from DS Nine, which was DS9 my and Voyager. Trek. Yeah, and, and Voyager, Voyager, which is Britt's favorite. Oh, so this perfect. Was, this was perfect. Uh, so this is made out of aluminum and brass. Oh, and this was practice for me because we just got our hands on a Shapoko 4 CNC router uh, from Carbide 3D. They nice. sent one to us to take her with and use in some videos. And I've been learning. I've been putting it through its paces and doing some smaller projects to get used to the machine and uh, learn more cam. Yeah. So this was a great um thing to try machining some brass and it worked awesome the shape poco was a champ i'm really dialing dialing in my feeds and speeds and all how that. many bits have you broken um i mean <laughs> in the last week yeah. or ever <laughs> no no in the last week uh two i think are, are you I breaking it because of the the, the material it's familiarity with the, the, yeah. the bits with you know how like, soft the uh, brass is or sure the yeah. the last thing the last one I broke was because my depth of cut was too deep, too aggressive. Uh, so generally, if you break a bit, I've found it's because you're either moving the bit too fast yeah. or it's trying to go through too much material at one time. Uh, yeah. Uh, so playing with the depth and the speed, those two things you can you can sign up. Kind of or you've clamped in the wrong place. I always clamp in the wrong place. Yeah. I don't yeah. think of where the... Oh, the, geez. I hit so many clamps. I have gone through so many clamps recently. <laughs> pop, pop, pop. Ah! Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but that's learned. That's what we're learning. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so it's look all, for all through Fusion again, right? It's all... Again, yeah. Through cam. Fusion. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, this we'll do a video on this some point. We have another um, uh, wood project we're doing on the mm. CNC machine. Mm. That'll be out first. And then in a little bit, we'll do some uh, Star Trek badges. Nice. It's all coming out soon. A lot of uh, finishing on that to get the soft yeah. edges. 
Yeah. yeah, a lot of a lot of hand sanding and polishing oh. to make this shiny. Yeah, <laughs> you can't get away from sanding. Doesn't matter, right? <laughs> no, but it's so worth it. Look how shiny yeah, it is. I, I, I know it's amazing. It's <laughs> the fact that so, it's, in, it's inset. The it the, is. Yeah. yeah. Oh. And of course, now Bill's talking about doing a noisy cricket uh, in aluminum. Yeah. yeah. This would be quite the challenge, but but I bet I could do it. I actually got a comment on the video from one of the guys that made the noisy cricket for the first. Uh, Men in Black movie. Yeah, he was on the prop team. Oh. Yeah. Oh, it was... Um, oh, oh, I wish I could remember his YouTube channel. He did a really great video on Here, the... Um, on the... Sort of the history of those props. Is that it? No, that's the album. No, I'll find it real quick. <laughs> it's right here. So yeah, he left a, a comment on our Noisy Cricket video, um, and he has his own YouTube channel where he, he's gone over past props he's worked on for uh, Hollywood. He's been in the uh, industry for 20 years, and mm-hmm. he was like, it was such a nice comic, because he's like, yours looks way cleaner than ours, because we had to make them all really fast. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Uh, and he talks about how they sent them off. They like milled some of the parts in resin, sent them off to get cast in metal from a foundry. And oh. then they had to clean them all up afterwards. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the, the YouTube channel is Grimwood Hollow. And the video is Men in Black Secrets Behind the Scenes uh, Making the Weapons. He had, he took so many photos of the original props when they were making them. And he still had them for this video. So if anyone's interested in seeing how literally all the props were made for the first Men in Black movie, That's look awesome. up Grimwood Hollow. on. Oh, he's like... You know, the late 90s era two megapixel digital camera photos yeah. or yeah. Uh, oh okay oh, it might yeah. have been it yeah, might have been photo scan. film photos that were scanned yeah oh, oh wow I didn't think that's about even that. more work oh yeah i'm not yeah. i'm not sure i love, yeah, but love that totally history. worth a watch yeah uh super yeah. super cool Hey everyone, before we continue on this week, I want to let you know that This Is Only a Test is made possible this week from the Stack Overflow podcast, which you should check out. Wondering which skills you need to break into the world of technology or level up as a developer? Curious about how the tools and framework you use every day were created? The Stack Overflow podcast is your resource for tough coding questions and your home for candid conversations with guests from leading tech companies about the art and practice of programming. For 13 years, the Stack Overflow podcast has been exploring what it means to be a developer and how the art and practice of software programming is changing our world, as I'm sure it has been changing in their industry as well. The show dives into topics that matter from a listenership of developers, tech enthusiasts, and educators of all stages of their careers at this moment, and provides tangible tools and conversations about the infrastructure in tech right now. With new episodes twice a week, the show dives into topics like Web3, code security, cloud infrastructure, and how AI can solve real-world problems, and more. Listen at stackoverflow.com slash podcasts, or at any major podcast platform now back to the show it sounds like you got the bug for for machining though like, oh yeah it's it, everything must be metal, out of metal yeah that's the thing. you and adam it's it's like this this journey you guys go through with the prop making mm-hmm. yeah like the closer you get to the real material not even the material as if they made it you know on, on set but the real material mm-hmm. as if it was a real product yeah right? the that's, more yeah injection yep. molded it could look or the more machined it can can so feel true. like that's like uh, our CNC project, the wood one, it's something that was originally made out of wood that we're right. doing. So right. it's it's making it out of wood makes the most sense. Usually we do foam and we try and make the foam look like whatever, but it's very liberating to work with the real material. Yeah. And then the finishing, like on the wood thing, we, we stained it and then we just scuffed the edges. I hit yes. it with a wire wheel to uh, yeah. to weather it. And it's yeah. done. It looks good. I've got my Vash revolver over there. That's 3D printed and ABS. I really want to make one of those out of aluminum. That would yeah. be so much work, but I really yeah. want to do it. <laughs> I've seen um, – I want to do something similar with like you know laser cut wood pieces because I've seen some really great laser cut kits, but I never get a chance to, to finish them. And, and even mm-hmm. like just taking down the hard edges, right, uh, or, or doing you know a, a little bit of a – just a, a, a coating on it, a stain on it or something just yeah. to make it look a little bit less like the, the laser cut material. Um, but yeah, a little bit extra work, whether mm-hmm. it's sanding, you know, staining, you know, taking down the hard edges, it goes a long way to making something look really nice. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's, I think that's uh, caught, you're caught up on all the projects. Well, you guys uh, are find something. N- not, you know, leaving the, the foam roots because mm-hmm. I know uh, you're going to be involved in silicon. That's right. Yeah, and I would show you the helmet, except Adam has it now. I, I took a picture of it. Don't worry Good. about it. I, yeah, so I'll, I'll throw a picture up. Uh, but you're doing a workshop about making foam yeah. helmets. 
I'm really stoked. Beverly's doing one and Sophie's doing one as well. Two of our Pacific Northwest friends. Uh, very proud of the, the Pacific Northwest <laughs> uh, gang these days. Um, that'll be on May 14th is the actual um, day we're doing the workshop. I believe you can still sign up now. Uh, we did this last year. I made a lantern that was really mm. fun, all out of foam. And people got the materials. People who signed up uh, got the materials mailed out to them. And then we built it together on a stream. We're going to do the same thing. I designed this helmet. Adam tweeted a photo of it uh, the other day of him wearing it. So if you want to see what it is, you can go check Adam's tweet. But it's a cool kind of fantasy looking helmet. And we're going to assemble it together. And then I'll show some fun ways to sort of uh, uh, add fun detail to it and make it your own. The the fins uh, on that helmet the they look really gorgeous. The, there's yeah, a really cool was, silhouette to it. Right, I was kind of, I don't know kind of inspired by World of Warcraft a little bit. Um, inspired a little bit by by um, Elvis Lord of the Rings elves. Kind of kind of mix all that yeah. in there. Yeah, yeah, the, the high fantasy stuff. Yeah, oh yeah, totally. So that's um, going to be super super fun, and I do believe there's still room if anyone wants to join. I will include a link in the uh, description for watching the YouTube video. Yeah, uh, and personal projects, photography. Yeah, so so we just went to Hawaii for a total just a vacation. We didn't do a lick of work. It was amazing. The the this vacation was with two of our friends, and we yeah. had it scheduled. For October in 2020, yeah, but that got canceled. Got pushed back a little bit. <laughs> it was with you know Mike and Aaron. You met them at Drake. Yeah, 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 yeah. So there are, are actually Mike was my college roommate. We're old, old, old buddies, and we've been planning this trip for forever. We finally got to do it, and it was awesome. We rented a really cool house. We did tons of snorkeling. I actually got a GoPro Hero Nine mm. to do some uh, underwater filming. We did our snorkeling. And I was really impressed. I haven't bought a new GoPro in years, and yeah. they're crazy good now. Yeah. The, yeah. the stabilization is insane. The digital stabilization. They, they kind yeah. of took away the need for the all the mechanical complexity of a, right? of a gimbal. Yeah. Yeah. So I was able to film underwater when we were snorkeling. We saw dolphins. Mm -hmm. uh, and I got them on, on camera. I, I think I tweeted all of this a couple of weeks ago, uh, if anyone wants to see these. But um, the we highlight, also... The yeah. Highlight. Do you want to tell... Uh, we did uh, night snorkeling with manta rays, yeah, wow. which was incredible. They have a whole system set up, and uh, they take you on a boat with a bunch of other people, and you all float on the surface with snorkels. You don't even need fins because you're all holding on to this flotation device that has big lights on it, okay. huge batteries. They look right. like car batteries. Yeah, <laughs> and they're just shining light down, down into the water. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and the manta rays are super shy and gentle. They, they, they're not like stingrays. They don't have stingers or no. anything. Um, but they are enormous. They are gigantic. They get really close to your face. The ones, like, the ones around, uh, where was the bay we went to? I can't remember. Yeah, it was on the Kona side. Yeah, um, yeah, just south of Kona. Island. Yeah, but uh, um, the manta rays there have learned uh, from each other to do loops when they feed. Mm. So they would come upside down and rub their bellies against <sighs> us. <laughs> yeah, and they were like, "Don't touch them!" And we're trying not to touch them, but they're, yeah, yeah. they're, they're like gills are going by us. See, and stuff. you can see down into their massive cavernous <laughs> mouths. <laughs> it was so cool. It was really really good, and I, I, I believe I tweeted a video of. Of some of that footage yeah wow. I, I had no idea like i don't know if it's just the lights they were using but their backs um and especially their bellies too you could see uh patterned spots that looked like they were luminescent a little bit mm. i think it was just a reflection of the light but it looked like the one in moana <laughs> i was yeah. like it's grandma it's grandma tala <laughs> yes <laughs> oh that was wow. magical uh and then i took my normal still camera uh, my sony a7r3 mm -hmm. and i have a i i splurged a couple years ago on a Massive to telephoto lens, a 200 to 600, just for shooting animals, birds. We saw tons of birds in Hawaii, hummingbirds. Uh, but in Hawaii, my favorite thing that we, we shot were sea turtles. Oh. We hiked uh, we hiked about a mile and a half out to a bay that was really secluded. And there were just like a dozen sea turtles chilling in the shadows, just chowing down on algae and stuff. Uh, and I got some pretty good photos of them too. That was that was pretty exhilarating for me. I think turtles are awesome. I love it. Love that you know your photography is amazing. Like the, the animal Thank photography, you. and that you've really taken to it. Um, and that you found you guys have found this really wonderful balance of doing the projects that you want and you love mm -hmm. at your own pace, as well as also finding time to you know have hobbies outside of what would be considered the work, the day to day work. Yeah. 
we we definitely feel the urge to turn all our hobbies into a business. But I know. for me, especially in the last couple of years, photography has kind of been my escape. Uh-huh. Um, I love I love taking and processing photos, but I love and everyone does. I love taking photos the most. Yeah. It's it's like a machine gun. I have a fast shutter, <laughs> so if a bird goes by, I go brrr, and I feel cool. And most of the photos I've taken in the last few years, I, I'm like, oh, that was cool. Delete. Like I, I, I'm just in it for the activity and every once in a while, if I get some good photos, I'll post them somewhere, but I'm really just, it's an escape for me. It's a hobby nice. and it's been really chill to not have to have every project. I do have some sort of output. Oh, hobbies for the sake of hobbies. I need mm-hmm. to write that down. Remember that not everything yep. needs to be content. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wow. All right. That was a whirlwind of a catch up, but I know uh, I think we're caught up though. I think that's it. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's the, the the workshop coming up soon. I will include links, of course, to the uh, the fusion tutorial. I think it's well. Thanks. It, it's it is you, you're you're not just giving people you, people get the fish and they get to learn how to fish. That's right. That's the important part. <laughs> they get to learn how to fish and you also give them the fish in the STL model. So Perfect. that's that's yeah. That's, yeah I, I, well, I really we're getting, enjoy. We get a lot of really um, uh, kind uh, review comments. Oh yeah, a lot of great feedback. Yeah, right. like. Like where people are saying, like, uh, like we were talking about earlier, they're like, yeah, I downloaded all the models I wanted to. And now there's a couple I want that aren't available. And now I can make them myself. And it's mm-hmm. like, that's exactly what it's for. It's for, you know, you have your resin printer and they're so affordable now. Like yeah. if we did this, like this whole tutorial, uh, like, I don't know, like even five years ago, I think we would have gotten a lot of pushback. But just in these last five years, resin printers are so accessible and, and FDM printers too. Yeah. 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 Just yeah. to There's be able a... to, to model simple things yourself is just so empowering. Oh yeah. And... It's, it's so rewarding. And then sharing those models and having people riff on them, there's mm-hmm. like a, there, there's this crazy rush you get of seeing something. Oh my God, they, they cared about the thing I spent time on. I made for myself. Yeah. Uh, are you planning on doing more? Hopefully more tutorials. Um, I have a couple more, maybe not 3D printing ones, but I have a couple more prop making courses I want to do. So for example, painting and weathering. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. These are all opportunities for me to kind of maybe not say, here's how to paint props more. It's more like, here's how I paint props. It's here's just, we're just going to cover the way I do it. It's not going to be comprehensive. Um, because I feel like that's where I can bring some value to this space. If you want yeah. to see how someone else, like if you want to watch, pay attention to Harrison. If you want to find out the best professional way to paint something, he's the guy. But right. for um, as a hobbyist, painting props, I think that's the perspective I'm going to share. And um, we have a few more uh, courses like that that we want to get out the door as well. Awesome. Um, all right. Well, we're going to switch gears a little bit in the last couple minutes, 10 minutes to cover some news because I did want to cover I promise, some pop culture stuff. Yesterday oh, was yeah. Star Wars Day. Today, Revenge of the Fifth. Uh, did both of you watch the Obi-Wan trailer? You guys all caught up with all the yes. new stuff coming out in the world of Star Wars? Oh, yeah. Yep. We get to go back to Tatooine, <laughs> everyone's <laughs> favorite Star Wars planet. Uh, I, it looks it looks great. Um yeah. Uh, Ewan McGregor is awesome. I think he was probably the best, one of the best parts of the original um, uh, prequel trilogy. Yep, yep. And it's really exciting to see him come back. Yeah, I, I think uh, uh, the first season of Mandalorian, they had this round here, this this uh, diverse selection of uh, directors. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, from Bryce Dallas Howard, who's really run with it, and they gave her some of the best episodes to direct in the follow up seasons. Um, but uh what's the uh, director's name uh, deborah chow i want to say um they gave her uh the job of directing the obi-wan series and oh, she cool. did in the first mandalorian season the the episode where all the mandalorians the they come out at the end with their jetpacks oh, cool. they're saving so it's a huge yeah. action sequence and uh, even in this obi-wan um trailer you see some of that energy with like the rooftop um, shootout scenes yeah. um, they have. And of course, it's going to be, they announced that celebration last year or two years ago. That's the return of Hayden Christensen. Oh, cool. So uh, there will be a... There will soon be some Vader. There will be a Vader. There will, they do, there will they do be some, hint to some, that in, yeah. the, in the trailer. So Yeah. yeah. Yep. They, they, they're going to... I don't know. I mean, this is all like adding to the original, like the, the original story. And you had that Obi-Wan Vader big face-off on Death Star in A New mm-hmm. Hope that was, oh, 
was, you know, it was it was a fight. Sure, yeah. <laughs> right? It certainly it was, wasn't it, Duel of the Fates. No, no, it was a lot of more smack talking. <laughs> there was a more yeah. like, posturing, maybe. Yeah, yeah. So, so we had, had we had a what was it Rogue One? The, yes, the, the, Vader. Sure. At the very end of it. Sure. Yes. I, the way I picture it, it's at that point when Vader and Obi Wan are are in their you know their twilight years, they're like two samurai. Yeah. Who the fight is completely in their minds. That's right. right? That's right. That's right. Yeah. And, and, and then here they just still hot do blooded. a couple of clashes and then one yeah. guy loses really fast. That's, yes. That's the way yeah. I picture it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but they do reference when I last I saw you, you were the student. Now I am the master. Mm, so maybe right. this is what they're referring to when they're going to have that. Oh, sure. Oh, man. Yeah. 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 Six episode series uh, debuting at the end of this month. I think right after Celebration, they're going to do a two episode premiere so it's going to go mm, by nice. real fast through uh, end of may and through june um also want to give a shout out there's a, a behind the scenes if you like the behind the scenes stuff the gallery uh the making of the book of boba fett mm-hmm. yeah and i don't know if you guys watched the the boba fett show yeah we did um we, we saw the trailer f- yeah yeah we saw um the trailer for the the new gallery thing too it looks great the yep. the extra stuff they're doing on disney plus for all these shows is all top tier it's yeah. so incredible yeah did they show uh uh sean charlesworth's little stop motion guy they did not show uh, uh i, I was that mando season two actually i don't know if that was in boba but they, they didn't have any of the the practical effects stuff because they try okay. to get it all okay. done in an hour uh they did have a lot of you know talking about the volume the 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 luke well Big spoiler. Yeah, you guys know out there, the Luke's return in, in this season in the Book of Boba Fett and their improvements over that last sure, appearance. Yeah. Um, and they they hired one of the, the deep fake experts and Mark Hamill was very involved in the performance. Uh, not performance capture, but kind of performance mm-hmm. reference being on set mm-hmm. giving kind of guidance to the, the the body double as to how to perform as Luke. So a lot of, a lot of nice, sweet stuff. And it seems like everyone's having a ton of fun making that show. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Did you watch on Disney Plus that the the, the, the prestige uh the, the Imagineering story was that first one that behind the scenes series? Yeah, we watched the the Imagineer. The one about series. all the Disney uh, about the, the, Imagine- parks, the, the history of the parks exactly, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. That was yeah, so incredibly inspiring. Like yeah. seeing how all of that was put together. So cool. So that's probably I think their best documentary stuff they've done so far on Disney Plus. Uh but Coming up, at, I think next month or is it maybe July, a they're going to do one specifically on ILM called oh. Light and Magic. And oh, that a, sounds awesome! A multi-part oh, yeah. documentary series. Uh, Ron Howard's producing it, I want to say, and uh, it's going to involve you know all the ILM luminaries, um, Dennis Mirren, you know Phil Tippett, cool. and it's going to be uh, about the making of that effects studio you know, yeah the wizards I'm in. at ILM. i'm in i think if i was born t- 10 or 20 years earlier i might have might have made my way to to the bay area and, and, be, and been involved in that if i could have uh brick grabbed this she wants to show it off this was something a fan of ours sent someone who worked on book of boba fett this is tatooine sand oh yeah <laughs> nice got a little vial of yeah. sand from tatooine the real oh my thing gosh. Too. yeah all right all right yeah we, got, yeah we got sent that way before the show was even announced yeah so he's like here's sand i can't tell you what it's from okay i'm gonna tell you what it's from but don't tell anyone <laughs> So that's just, that's just it, fun. Don't fun break the vial because <laughs> no. that Tatooine sand, it gets everywhere. Yeah. If oh. you haven't heard, it gets everywhere. <laughs> I hate sand. <laughs> hey, everyone. It's Norm. And I want to let you know that this week's episode of This Is Only a Test is made possible with support from Backblaze. Backblaze makes backing up and accessing your data astonishingly easy. It's the thing that you don't want to have to stress out about. No matter how many places you might have a copy of your files, for us, it's video files, media files, photos. If you have it on a hard drive, a backup local drive, a network attached storage, you could always use an extra layer of security. And for just $7 a month, you could get unlimited computer backups for Macs and PCs on Backblaze. You can back up documents, music, photos, drawings, projects, all of your data, and access those backed up files on the go with their iOS and Android apps. I found that super useful for finding old photos or thumbnails for videos and sharing them uh, with coworkers and being able to get access to that 
on the go anytime. You can restore that data by mail and get a flash key or hard drive with all of your data shipped to your door in case you have corruption locally. And with Backblaze's Restore Return Refund Program, if you buy a hard drive restore, you can send that hard drive back within 30 days and get a full refund. If you're worried about accidentally deleting files for an extra $2 a month, you can increase your retention history to one year. Backblaze has restored over 55 billion files for their users, and they're recommended by the New York Times, Macworld, Tom's Guide, 9to5Mac, and me. Yes, I've been using them for years. You can get a 15-day, no credit card required free trial at backblaze.com slash test. Plenty of time to upload and download some files and try out their app. Seriously, back up your stuff and start protecting yourself from potential bad times. Go to backblaze.com slash test to get started. All right, back to the show. And then from Star Wars, we'll stick with a little bit of the uh, this, the Disney universe. Uh, Moon Knight, the finale was yesterday. Oh boy, we haven't seen that yet, but we are we are up to that. And it's been crazy I and have. awesome. Like, it's so different than any of the other Marvel shows. I yeah. knew nothing about Moon Knight going into it. Uh, so I think that was part of it. But it's been so much fun. The acting, Oscar Isaac's acting has been incredible. Oh, I yeah. Think. And even yeah. And with every progressing episode, it's like he's pushing himself more. And they're letting him, like, switch between the personalities more and more. Right. Uh, cool. I think they stuck the landing. It's one of the, oh, cool. I won't say few Marvel shows, but it is a Marvel show that stuck the landing, which is always the big fear when you have six episodes to try to wrap up a story. It's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot to yeah. get through in six yeah. episodes. Yeah. What got us to start watching it was um, uh, whenever there's something cool that is also like a good story, uh, you'll see it ripple through the cosplay scene and oh. you'll see a lot of cosplays um, start getting worked on very early. Yeah. And uh, Moon Knight, I saw a lot of that. And I was like, all right, let's see what this crazy guys about oh that's so funny and now i want to make stuff for moon Knight. So. <laughs> the circle is complete <laughs> I, I think I, I get a glimpse of that in the 3d modeling 3d printing world with people creating mm-hmm. props or bus from from those series as exactly getting yeah. excited about that but you were seeing that in the cosplay community people wanting to create like the the suited up version of moon Knight. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. That'll be the such scarab a good, is yeah, a good one yeah. to 3d print mm-hmm. yeah i think daryl was working on the scarab yep yeah. Um, but yeah, I've seen a um, someone who's making a, a miniature Moon Knight, like the traditional looking one for their kid, like a whole costume. Nice. Uh, then you know the full versions. But yeah, I think the suit one would be a great casual Dragon yeah. Con yeah. costume. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's a show that without it's, it's not a big spoiler to say that they've kept the show almost disconnected from the Marvel stuff. You know, it's not a lot of winks and nods mm-hmm. to the MCU. There are like a few offhand references to things that were kind of deep cuts in the mcu but it's not like you're gonna see you know thor captain america or iron man or spider-man right. pop up in not, this like, not doing no those reference. easter eggs yeah or, and, and i'm actually really happy about that I, I think it can stand on its own i mean you're gonna get the interest because it's a a marvel production and it's based on a comic book and maybe this is them testing the waters of like can we do a, a character that's lesser known has maybe it's finally good... time for Dark Hawk. It's yeah, finally yeah. time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they have they're like gonna, thousands of new Dark Hawk. They, they literally pull, go into the old archives and pull pull out comic book issues and, and find oh, here's a, a character was off off mentioned one time and yeah you know, and, and give them the spotlight and uh, and the character stands on its own. It's compelling, even though uh, it is you know it's it's not just like a Batman ripoff, let's say. Right. Right. Yeah. And I find that the character, even when he's not a superhero, like just the character by himself is, is super, super compelling. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. If, if, and then you're reminded, you're like, oh, right. Also, he's a superhero. That's cool. Too. That's the, I think that's the success of the show. You care mm-hmm. more about the character when he's not as Moon Knight. You hear more about his, his civilian alias and the, mm-hmm. the troubles he's going through in his, in his head than you do when he's in character. Like here, that's just like the, the checking the box of having the action. The action's great, but it's like I don't even I don't feel like I, I'm missing it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then this week, uh, there's Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness right. coming out. I got to find time. I don't even have tickets to see that yet, uh, but. Uh, apparently, it's uh, Marvel's first horror esque oh, horror right. movie. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll we'll have to, have to see how that how that how that plays out. Cool. We finally uh, saw the new Spider Man movie. 
Oh, um, you did? What'd you think? Yeah, we did, we we uh, didn't go out to see it in theaters, so we waited till it was we could watch it at home. But it was awesome. We've mm. seen it twice already, and and Doctor Strange is one of my favorites. I think Benedict Cumberbatch is awesome as Doctor Strange. He is. He is. Uh, it's a character that can be fun when he needs to be, um, mm-hmm. even though he very much is like the you know the professor type. Uh, and also, like, I feel like uh, my hair is kind of growing like Doctor Strange. Oh. Maybe, I could pull, maybe I could pull that off. <laughs> a, a costly opportunity. Awesome. Yeah, uh, Considering like, I look just like Benedict Cumberbatch. He, he went from being the new guy in the MCU to being the veteran so fast, it felt yeah. like. Him. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I, I really appreciate it when they have a character doing unusual things to us, like things that are outside of the ordinary, but they just do them all like it's normal. Mm-hmm. Like, like, for him, like, like walking through uh, like a forest field that he can walk through, but the the other guy can't like, he just casually mm. walks through it and the other yeah. guy runs into it, yeah. you know, like it's like, it's just so cool. Yeah. It's like, yeah, this is normal life. He's so awesome. <laughs> yeah. And the effects are so seamless now. All oh, the, yeah. the, yeah. the stuff, they, the, the floating spells and the portals through walls and all that stuff. Yeah. And Sam Raimi coming back to direct, you know, his oh, first cool. movie he's directed since, I don't know what that, the Oz movie, I want to say wow. Oz great and powerful, but you know, obviously, there's a huge fan base. He, and what he did for the superhero genre is mm-hmm. you know, we'll never, you know, can, can, can't be more thankful uh, mm-hmm. with the first two. First, well, let's we'll say first two Spider-Man movies. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> those first two were great. Yeah. yeah. Um, just a few Star Trek things. There's also, I don't know if you guys I mean, have, have been following, but there's, you know, Picard is wrapping up. Um, we haven't, yeah, we haven't been watching any of the new Star Trek stuff, you know. I hear a lot of great things, and it's on my uh, calendar to watch this weekend. But Strange New Worlds, okay, it's is uh, in the Discovery time frame, but it's the Enterprise, so it's Spock, Uhura, but it's Captain Pike, not Captain Kirk, so it's before Kirk. So oh, it's a spinoff wow. of Discovery. Uh, it's getting great reviews, and it's returned to the kind of uh, episodic format of Star Trek. So as opposed to one long season long serialized story, mm-hmm. it is. Uh, um, individual standalone episodes, allegories, you know, great science fiction. Yeah, so, really so the helpful. Orville. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, maybe still a little edgier than the Orville. I'd say there's, yeah. there's, there's still is that you know current um, Star Trek flair. We'll call yeah. it. lens awesome. flare. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think that's all the pop culture stuff. We're gonna skip some uh, technology, um, but any any gear you guys have been testing? Any? Any cool well, new toys and tools? Well, Bill got to check out the Steam Deck with you way back yeah, <laughs> at Valve when, uh, when you guys were the first people who got to check it out. Uh, we didn't get one of those, though. No. I was, I, I've been playing my Switch a lot. Um, but the thing I've been playing with the most is that Shapeoko 4 mm. uh, CNC machine. How, how, there, what's the, how big's the, the, the work area got, for that? I got the smallest one just because I'm really low on room down in the basement. Uh, but the the workable area is 17 and a half inches by 17 and a half inches by three or four inches on the Z. That's still pretty, pretty good size. It is. Yeah. And since I mostly make hand props, that's, that's yeah. more than I need. Oh, yeah. I can see myself someday getting a bigger one, though. Yeah. Oh. Um, that, that's been really solid. I've played with the Carvey in the past mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and I played with an X Carve. Yes. Or, yep. I just happen to get. Yep. Right. And this is a, this is in a different league. This is much more mm. rigid. Mm. Um, it's got an actual. It's got like a Makita trim router in it um, mm-hmm. for doing the cutting, which is a lot beefier. Um, I've I did some brass cutting on the Carvey, and it did it, but it took <laughs> it a didn't very want long to. time. It didn't want to do it. it. Did not want to do it. And also, they don't, they don't sell or support the Carvey anymore. So yeah, right, right, right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I've been really, really impressed with this this new CNC machine. Yeah, is it enclosed? Uh, no, no, no oh, that okay. was not. I, I, I set up a vacuum though. Yeah, I got the boot because yeah, it, yeah. it makes a mess. I it know. really does. And then that's the, the that's the the challenge of uh, you know small workspaces or home mm-hmm. workspaces. And yeah. you guys have done such a great job in your in your downstairs area yeah. of having a filming area, but also a, a really nice uh, you know multifaceted workshop. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 tight down there because we have a lot of stuff, but we've 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 got a good flow down there. We got a yeah. good arrangement. Oh. We did get one of these. Oh yeah, I saw these on Reddit, so I had to had to buy them. So it's, it's a pen. Oh, what yeah, is going right. on there? You switched the back right. and it went from smooth to having a crazy geometric texture. Yeah. yeah for the podcast listeners, you can probably hear this. 
Oh wow! Mm-hmm. So what it's like is a, going on? it's like a mylar sleeve, and uh-huh. it gets tensioned. You can feel there's like a, a honeycomb uh, uh, geometric. Oh, oh thanks, oh. Bill. Oh. Our cat's in the way. Uh, underneath it, so it gets uh, tensioned and wrinkles controllably. So it's it's like a Whoa. fidget. Oh, yeah. and it's really pulling it against the structure underneath. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. It's deeply satisfying. Wow. Uh, the the company that makes these is called Crush Metric. If you look that up on Google, you'll find where you can buy these. They're really All right. Cool. Oh. And my cat wants it. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> That's our tech review. Oh. <laughs> awesome. Uh, I'm going to give some shout outs to some Lego sets Ooh, I've had yeah. my eye on. Um, and DeLorean of... you put together, by the way. Oh. Mm, so I'm good. So, I mean, it's it's like hard to get the stuff in stock now. I had to pre-order that at like 9 p.m. the night before, like right at when it was available oh, for man. pre-order, and now it's backlog. So, you know, the, whether it's supply issues or how many they decide to make, like some of the popular stuff, the Hor- Horizon. Speaking of video game stuff, there's a mm-hmm. Tall Neck from Horizon oh. Zero Dawn. It's about wow. a foot tall, 13 inches tall, um, and that's sold out everywhere. And I, I got a pre-order, but it's coming in like a month and a half or so, mm-hmm. fingers crossed. But that one looks gorgeous. And so they have all these wonderful licenses, and I'm putting lights in them now, um, yeah. my bricks. Um, and I've been dabbling because some of the Lego stuff is is harder to get. There's also some third-party stuff, um, you know, not official Lego, but uh, designed by uh, – still like lego fan designers like jk brickworks um but there's a company um kata bricks overseas that does their own lego style bricks you know injection molded and they have kits that also look beautiful like these these sculptures and a little little uh, price a little cheaper so i've been checking those out and we'll make a video of that soon yeah. That's great. Well, we're looking forward to it. Oh, yeah. yeah. We've been loving the tested videos. They've been great. <laughs> yeah. And you know, we're going to have you back on the channel uh, in due time. So for folks wondering where Bill's at, uh, we're going to get you back to San Francisco. Britt, right. you too. Yeah. Sure. Get you down so here. excited. <laughs> I can yeah. hold the camera. <laughs> <laughs> or, or just hang out. Yeah, just hang oh, out. Oh, that sounds great. Yeah. And and, and we'll, we'll make some stuff together. That's um, right. Well, it's so good to see both of you. Good um, chat with you, Norm. Yeah, uh, I'm so glad you got to take a vacation. And uh, and for people out there, please check out uh, not only the Punish Props Academy YouTube channel, but upcoming workshops. And I cannot recommend enough that Fusion 360 tutorial, or just for the just for the noisy cricket model, if you want mm-hmm. to print that out. It's a great thing to print on a new resin printer. It is. It really is. All right, that does it for our show this week. Uh, we'll be back th- next week. Shore might be back, but we'll, we'll just kind of catch up with more more people, friends, and internet friends, and take it easy because, like I said, the you know, there's a lot going on in the world right now, and we're happy just to take a break from that and hang out with people we like. Fantastic. Awesome. Thanks for having us, Norm. This was great. Oh, uh, we'll include links, everything in the description below. Thank you all out there for listening. I'll throw an outro after the fact. Uh, So, all right. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Brett. We'll see you next time. See ya. See ya. Hi there. I didn't see you. So you're like, Kat, if you had stopped peeing, then I could buy like a top end Steam Deck (laughs) or like, you know... (laughs) Two no Oculus Quest. No, yeah. no, no, no. Right? Like these are these are these are how financial decisions are made. Or you could tell your kid, right? Like if you can get the cat, stop peeing everywhere. Just stop peeing in general. You know that that might be a new video card upgrade for you. That's it.